Can you stand the energy in this room? Isn't it awesome? Yay! <laughs> welcome and Happy New Year, and welcome back to campus uh, for the new semester. My name is Beth Daniel Holder, class of 82, and I'm chair of the Board of Trustees at Agnes Scott College. I'm here today for a very special occasion, and I particularly want to thank our uh, faculty, staff, and students who are so well presented here today. Thank you all for being here. Look at these students. Thank you for all coming out today, faculty and staff. I also want to recognize my fellow trustee members. They're out there in the, um, in the group. Um, I, they want to raise their hand, say hello to everybody. Um, and I also want to recognize um, our wonderful president's cabinet who are right back here on my on my right and um, do a fabulous job. <laughs> so as you know, Agnes Scott College is an extraordinary place with rich history of timeless traditions. The ringing of the bell in Main Hall and the sound of bagpipes are both symbols that signify something special is happening on campus. So today, January 9th, 2018, you heard the bell ring, you heard the bagpipes play, Indeed, something special is happening on campus today. The announcement of the ninth president of Agnes Scott College. <laughs> now, please join me in welcoming Deb Painter and Elizabeth No, co-chairs of the Presidential Search Committee, and they brilliantly led the search process that culminates today. Deb and Elizabeth. <laughs> Well, thank you, Beth. Elizabeth and I are so honored to be joining you and the Agnes Scott community today. Our task was a daunting one, finding a successor to Elizabeth Keish. That was a tall order. But with the support of many others gathered in this room today, the search committee took on the challenge. I want to take just a minute to acknowledge the members of the search committee, some of whom are with us today, who worked just tirelessly through this entire process. Faculty members were Christine Cousins, Doug Fonts, who is with us today, Janelle Pfeiffer, staff members, both of whom are with us today, Stacy Robbins and Susie Vasquez, class of 2019 students, Emily Duncan and Taylor James, and trustees, Ron Alston and Glenn Denning, who is here, Portia Morrison, Tawana Ware, not to mention our board chair, Beth Holder, and our past board chair, Clyde Tuggle. So please join us for just a moment in thanking them for their exceptional dedication to this process. Now, before I turn it over to Elizabeth, I'd also like to acknowledge um, some people, many of whom I, I hope are in the room, who helped us in the process by serving as delegates. These were individuals from all across our campus community who helped us with the final interview process. So if any of the delegates, faculty, staff, students, uh, and trustees are here today, would you please raise your hand so everyone can appreciate your contribution. And now I would like to ask Elizabeth to describe the process in a little bit more detail. Thank you so much, Deb. It was such an honor to serve with you as co-chair of this committee. Um, it was a fabulous committee and I'm very excited to be here today to tell you about our process. So the search spanned an eighth month, eight month process. It was a very long eight months. Over that time period, we did a lot of things. First, we hired a search firm, Whit Kiefer, to assist us with the process. We sought input from the Agnes Scott community through listening sessions and online surveys, which many of you participated in. We developed a leadership profile to completely and appropriately describe the Agnes Scott College opportunity for interested candidates. We, re we re received and reviewed dozens of nominations and applications. And then we spent two full days with back-to-back -back interviews with candidates um, who were very strong. We were extremely impressed with both the strength of the candidate pool as well as its diversity. The pool brought to us a diverse array of backgrounds, uh, perspectives, and talents. 
After the extensive review of our impressions from those interviews, as well as information that we received from reference reports and additional due diligence checks, the committee narrowed the group down to four finalists. We brought those four people back for additional long um, multi-day interviews with a variety of delegates from the campus community. They met with students, faculty, staff, trustees, and the president's cabinet. And we really do appreciate all those delegates that helped us with this process. Following these interviews and additional due diligence reviews, we were able finally to fulfill the charge that the board had given us and we were able to present with overwhelming support from all of the delegate constituencies a final candidate to the Board of Trustees for approval. Thank you. Thank you, Deb and Elizabeth, for your incredible leadership. And thank you again to the search committee for your hard work and dedication. Let's give them all another hand. So here we are. By the end of this search process, one candidate emerged and distinguished herself. Based on her significant experience in the international arena, her strong history as transformative leadership and her commitment to excellence and to educating women. I believe our next president is extremely well positioned to continue the momentum of summit and to contribute greatly to Agnes Scott's growth as the premier liberal arts college. She will be stepping into the role armed with solid foundation built by Mary Brown Bullock and Elizabeth Keish. Yet there's immense opportunity for her to make her own mark and I am confident that she will. A Phi Beta Kappa graduate of Mount Holyoke College, which recognized her as a woman of influence in 2012. She is a strong supporter of women's education and she's passionate about mentoring young women. She comes to Agnes Scott with an extensive background in international economic development and international project finance and holds a JD degree from Northeastern University School of Law. Appointed by, the, by President Barack Obama and confirmed by the U.S. Senate in March 2010, she served for seven years as director of the U.S. Trade and Development Agency, an independent federal agency that advances economic development and U.S. commercial interests in developing and, developing and middle-income countries. In that role, she led the development of programs in China, India, and Brazil, she testified before Congress. She accompanied the president on foreign trips. She met with heads of state and business leaders around the world. She diversified her agency's leadership and gained recognition as the best place to work within the federal government. She also collaborated with other women's college graduates to establish the Women in Public Service Project. This project launched by then Secretary of State Hillary Clinton in 2011 and is now housed at the Woodrow Wilson Center. This program involves partners from around the world and is committed to closing the gender leadership gap in public service, ensuring that women hold 50% of policy and political leadership positions by 2050. Hello, isn't that amazing? Before joining the public sector, she was a partner in the Boston and DC law firm of Mintz Levin, where she practiced in the areas of international and domestic project finance. She has a long love of teaching and learning and currently teaches international project finance at Georgetown University School of Law. And she's also taught at Boston University School of Law. So friends, this experienced leader has sat at the table. Her accomplishments demonstrate that she has been engaged in high-level thinking about the issues that are educating our students to address as future leaders in a global society. I firmly believe that she brings the right formula of international experience, financial acumen, and proven operational leadership, along with a strong commitment to inclusive excellence to the liberal arts and to women's education. She will build upon the recent successes of the college and further heighten Agnes Scott's stature among the best liberal arts colleges in the country. And now it is my pleasure to announce that the Board of Trustees has unanimously approved the appointment 
of Leocadia I. Zach as the ninth president of Agnes Scott College. Please join me in welcoming Lee and her husband, Ken, as new members of the Agnes Scott family. much for that astounding, warm welcome. I am so delighted to be here. Thank you so much to the search committee, to the trustees, to the students, the Scotties, um, to the faculty and staff. I mean, I can't tell you how pleased I am about this announcement today. Um, I have to say, I have a little bit of a difficult role this morning, uh, this afternoon. They asked me to try to introduce myself, and that's a little bit of a tricky proposition, as you might know. So I'm just going to very briefly tell you why I'm so happy to be here, and a little bit about my hopes for Agnes Scott. But I'm going to start with mentioning the movie Jerry Maguire. Now, I know some of you have seen that movie. I know most of the trustees are thinking about the line, show me the money. Um, but what I'm thinking about is the phrase that I really love and the line that I really love, which is, you had me at hello. Agnes Scott had me at hello. The minute that I walked onto this beautiful campus, I flash back to my days when I first saw my college campus, a woman's college, yay! Um, it is beautiful, it is an environment that's inclusive and diverse, but it's also one that has outstanding people. It's warm, it's special. It's also a place where students are supported, where students are cared about, where students have the opportunity to be their best selves. And I think that is so important about Agnes Scott. And I have to tell you, like some of you, not all of you, my class color is yellow. And, my <laughs> and our mascot was the Sphinx. But I've had the opportunity over recent years to talk about liberal arts education. It really is a passion of mine. And in the travels that I've done internationally, I've had the opportunity to discuss the importance of liberal arts education. And to me, it is the most valuable way to learn. The result of a liberal arts education is that people think critically, they embrace change, and they have the ability to manage their destiny. And I have to say recently, the world has become closer to us. And I think, as a matter of fact, all you have to do is look at your cell phone and you see that the world is not far away. It's in the palm of your hand. And that's where Agnes Scott in Summit has taken liberal arts one step further. It really has reinvented the liberal arts. And as a result, it is no surprise to me, it shouldn't be a surprise to any of you, that it, it was named one of the most innovative colleges in the country by US News and World Report. And it's something we should cheer about. So <laughs> it's... And I think that is going to be one of, I hope, one of my themes of the presidency. We should be cheering for Agnes Scott. It is such a special place. Summit is outstanding. There is nothing like it. It is unique. It is an opportunity to build world leaders. It is an opportunity to understand one another. It's a campus which you look at and you see that it's diverse, it's inclusive. Summit, Agnes Scott, 
is one of the, and is the, premier college in the country. And I'm so excited to be here. And one of the things is, it has magnificent stories to tell. And I have to say, in going through the process that was described earlier, um, I had an opportunity to hear some of these stories. And they were magnificent. One of them was told to me by one of the professors, who, and now this is gonna get back, sorry, um, that teaches literature. It was talking about going with their students on their first journey abroad. And during the course of that journey, in their first year, the student said, I get it now. I understand why I read all that stuff. Now, I have to tell you, that doesn't happen at other colleges in their first year. I challenge some of the people up here to tell us when it happened to them. Um, but it's happening to you in your first year. And it's something for us to celebrate, something for us to shout about. As I was learning more about Agnes Scott, one of the things that I really loved are the traditions. I love the, you know, the black hat. I love the honor code. But one thing, which I got to hear today, um, was the ringing of the bell. And especially the ringing of the bell when a student gets their first job or receives their first acceptance to graduate school. What I see in the coming days is that my job is going to be to ring that bell every day for you, to be out there to tell your story. And the students, the Scotties who are here, your job, I hope, is to live your time here at Agnes Scott gloriously and curiously and to tell your stories. Share your stories with one another, Share your stories with the faculty and, and staff. Share yourselves globally, because you are global leaders. And share your stories with me as well. And for you to every day enjoy your education, to learn from one another, and to expect excellence. To try it on every day like your best pair of jeans. Um, and to be sure that you have the opportunity to be your best self. So that is my wish for Agnes Scott, and that is my pledge to you, that I will take your stories, and you too will take your stories, and sing your praises far and wide, because Agnes Scott, you Scotties, are the best. <laughs> Before I close, I do want to thank a few people. I definitely want to thank my family and friends. My parents were first generation, and they really believed in the power of education and in giving back to their institutions. My siblings, um, my brother Frank, my sister Mary, are both educators. Uh, they have been a great inspiration to me, and they've also guided me. I also suspect they'll be watching me um, to make sure that I do this right, um, as they always have. And I also have to thank, and as you saw coming in, um, my husband, Ken Hansen, who's made this journey with me. We're going to give him a round of applause. <laughs> so. uh, Ken has been uh, my partner in, in life um, and law and teaching. He actually has spent, uh, he's very comfortable on campus, especially a women's college campus. Um, he was an economics professor at Wellesley in Bryn Mawr. Uh, he is currently a lawyer teaching, uh, or excuse me, practicing in the area of international project finance. And he and I have been co-teachers together. Um, so he's been a wonderful partner. And yeah, we're gonna give him a round of applause. <laughs> and I absolutely have to thank President Keish. <laughs> she, as you all know, has done such an amazing job to make Agnes Scott and Summit what it is today. 
I have to say, I was asked today, what am I nervous about? And I said, I'm not really nervous about a lot of things. But I will say, filling this woman's shoes, following her, um, is a little bit intimidating. Um, but she has just done such an amazing job. And I pledge to you, I will do my best to honor your great legacy here at Agnes Scott. So again, thank you all. Thank you for this wonderful opportunity. I am so thrilled to be here. I can't wait to meet more people from the community and clearly can't wait to meet all you Scotties. Thank you so much for this warm welcome. It really is my pleasure. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> I have to say, so let me tell you a story. You know, this, this is a remarkable college, and it's been a remarkable college since 1889. And I know we have quite a few alums here, and we have alums who are trustees, and it's a place that really from the very beginning believed in empowering women who could go on to change the world. But this is also a place that doesn't rest on the past. It's constantly trying to innovate and to adapt and to become ever more powerful and ever more relevant for the current moment and to always lift its aspirations and those of its students and faculty and staff. And so, you know, as I've thought about this transition, it's my 12th year here, you know, I had the great good fortune, the wonderful gift of following an extraordinary president, Mary Brown Bullock. And I believe she is here. Uh, where is Mary? There she is, Mary Brown Bullock. Um, you know, when I arrived the first day in the office, Mary had left, uh, a, a button that said, have you hugged a college president today? <laughs> and that inspired me to be a hugger, and Lee's a hugger too, so that's, that's really great. Um, but every moment I felt that Mary was b behind me and by my side. She would answer my questions, she was excited about my leadership, and she really saw this as passing the baton to the next president. And as I've thought about this moment of transition, I realize that Agnes Scott has been on this extraordinary journey of transformation over the past two decades. Starting with Mary Brown Bullock, who really stabilized this college at a time when, like many women's colleges, it was declining in enrollment and it was a tough time in the history of Agnes Scott. And Mary came in and wow, did she turn things around. And over the past 12 years, working together, we have continued to strengthen Agnes Scott, and we have given it this distinctive identity through our Signature Program Summit. And so as I was thinking about this transition, I thought, I want a next president of Agnes Scott who will be able to take Summit to the next level who will believe passionately in our mission of being a diverse and inclusive global institution that is inspiring the next generation of leaders. And when I met Lee, I was like, oh my God, I hope we get her because she is the right person. I cannot tell you how excited I am to be passing the baton to President Zach, uh, to <laughs> P. Zach, perhaps, is the, is, is, I don't know, student Scotties will come up with their own way to call her, but, you know, P. Quiche, P. Zach, it's got a nice ring to it, and, and how excited I am, and I want to pledge, she pledged to all of us her passion and her leadership and her best efforts. And I'm so excited about what that will mean for this institution. I, in turn, on behalf of all of us, want to pledge to you, Lee, and to Ken, our warmest welcome, our support, our enthusiasm, our partnership and colleagueship. And I cannot wait to cheer the great successes of Agnes Scott under President Zach's leadership.
Thank you. There's one more thing, though. So uh, Lee uh, confessed to me that one thing that she's still working on is her purple wardrobe. <laughs> and uh, that she had to look far and wide. She's ordered, she's basically bought every purple scarf in the greater Washington metropolitan area. But, you know, this is the beginning of a journey of lots of journeys, but one of them is building an awesome purple wardrobe. And so it's my great pleasure to add to this wardrobe um, by giving Lee her very own blingy Scotty purple scarf. Thank you, President Keish, for that warm welcome. And again, welcome President-elect Zach and Ken. We're so happy to welcome you to the Agnes Scott family. And I know that you all are anxious to meet her. And so you will be receiving an email shortly that, um, that will describe some opportunities to meet Lee and Ken this afternoon at the Hub and various locations around the campus. So please uh, look out for that. And, um, and, and also during this transition process, Lee and Ken will be back in Atlanta and, uh, and at Agnes Scott College, and they'll, there'll be other opportunities for you to meet them as well. So please um, also check the website for, um, for a video and updates about this announcement. And please use, take some selfies, perhaps with, with uh, President-elect Zach and Ken, and post them on, um, on social media and use the hashtag Agnes Welcomes PZAC. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for being here today. We are so grateful that you all came out to support this announcement, and, uh, and we look forward to, a, to the coming years together. Thank you.